I took on d5, and I wonder if you can guess what I played here, which I think is Ripka's second favourite, but um, the, the more materialistic e takes f4 is, is also recommended. But I, I don't think it, thought it, was this, it was that bad. Um, so what, what do you think I played here? What would you play here? Um, it's a nice practical move, I thought, because it restricted the scope of the pieces, the opponent's pieces, more, more than um, the materialistic continuation. Uh, so if I give you five seconds, what, what would you play here, starting from now? Okay, I played knight f6, so I'm offering that e5 form. So perhaps best is queen c5, or to be considered queen c5. He actually took, and it ends up clearly worse after knight h5. Because I'm, I'm, that vulnerable you know, weakness, that g3, which he had created from earlier playing h3, is now exposed. Because I'm threatening knight g3 check if he's not careful. So he has to guard that g3 square. He guarded it by playing queen e1. And then I just took on d6. And look, it's you know a wonderful you know position, a pawn up. <laughs> With the, these two bishops not being that, that great. And my knight being quite kind of good, eyeing these weaknesses. He plays bishop c3, and you know he's obviously he's offering another pawn, but I think it's a it's a trap here. Knight f4, maybe queen e4, just just winning material. I, there's no rush to win any material. I'm, I'm a pawn up, so I just centralize and make sure my pieces are protecting each other. And he took on g7. I thought, well, I know he's weakening my dark squares, but he's also weakening his own. And we'll see later that d2 becomes a very important entry point for me. Um, to finish off the game. So I just took on g7, not minding the check at the moment. Um, but after rook f2, I thought, well, just in case this check is useful, and I think I, I could potentially gobble on f4, but I wanted to st extinguish the opponent's counterplay. And he really didn't like this move in post-mortem b4. I mean, he thought it was a good move. So not only am I stopping the check at the moment, but also b3, threatening to squash that bishop, gain control of d1, push the bishop on the first rank, where it will be a tactical vulnerability. He gives up a second pawn in desperation now by playing g4. So I safely take on f4. I don't want to go to, to f6, because you know he might have f5 and some play. So I have to take now. But I, I thought there was nothing here for him. Now that I've extinguished that check, you know it seems quite kind of safe. He plays queen f1. Okay, you know, if I move the knight, you know, maybe f7 is a problem. So I thought, well, I've always got g5 here if, if necessary. But first I slip in this check. So he plays rook f3, a nice pin for me. And given that the knight's not being attacked anymore because the, the rook's pinned, I play b3, squashing that bishop, not minding queen c3 check at the moment. Bishop b1, and now I simply play g5. So two pawns up now with a dominating position, the queen in a nice central square, a nice pin. So he tries to unpin. And here I just play rook e8. I'm looking for infiltration points now. So he's got a very desperate position here. If he plays rook e5, maybe I can just take, and if queen f4, queen e5. Or even, I don't even need to lose a pawn. Rook f4, I can just play queen e5. So forcefully get the queens off, if, you know, or you know, just it's just winning. You know, basically this position is just winning. But um, the end is very short from here. I, I play check, and uh, for some reason Ribka thought queen b2 was the strongest, but I just simply thought queen d2 last night was a killing move, because what can White do against rook e1? If he plays rook f2, then rook e1 anyway. So if takes, then check. I take the queen with check and I take his bishop. I thought it was all over. So did he and he resigned here. So it was quite a crushing win. I, I don't really... Um, it's it's strange, you know, that the, the vacuum, you know, around White's king caused by, you know, these, these exchanges of pieces. It's just... But, but both sides' positions are getting weaker and weaker with all the exchanges. And there's there's square opportunities until, you know, even d2 becomes possible to come to, you know, when, when he exchanged off the bishop. So that's um, a fascinating aspect here, how both sides are weakening themselves as, as they exchange off pieces. But uh, let's go back. Um, so a king's engine in review, four pawns attack. Uh, but I, I just played this standard plan uh, to try and transpose it to a Benoni structure. So we've got the pressure on the e-file. And also the potential counterplay on the queen side, because I've got this 
pool majority here, and you're supposed to use the pool majority on the queen side as well, in exchange for potentially being swamped in the centre. So queen a5, bit of a provocative move, but it had this idea that um, if it does provoke king h1, it can slip back to c7, which is kind of useful strategically to prevent e5 from white support c4. So I'm trying to use this queenside pawn majority, but I do so with this pawn sack, which um, for me the verdict is out at the moment. It's not so clear, theoretically, if it's a great move or not. But in practice it was a dangerous move, which um, put the opponent under you know, psychological pressure, and in over the board, psychological pressure is worth a lot. I think Kasparov commented recently, you know, that um, you know there's a great psychological burden when you, when you come to play. So knight d5 here. I wanted to make sure that the dynamism of the opponent's pieces was kept to the minimum. So this pawn sack enabled that. But uh, and in fact, I'm gaining d6 anyway. The way he played it, so I was up a pawn. So um, despite trying to sacrifice all my pieces, you know, I end up being the greedy pig here, but with a better position as well. So bishop c3, rook d8. So he took, and you know, he's weakening the dark squares, as you'll see. You know, as you see here, these these squares are all weak. White's bishop is not, you know, it's not great. So um, it's annoying, you know, not being able to play f5 because of knight g3. It's just a very dangerous position, a pawn down. So g4, and he's going two pawns down, and the rest is just very easy to play for black. This check makes sure that. Um, Queen d2 is even more effective because if Queen d2 immediately, you know, maybe, you know, Rook f2 and then Rook e1 is not not possible because he could just take my Queen and end up a Rook ahead. But by throwing in the check, I'm disconnecting his King from his Queen, so Queen d2 is really now threatening Rook e1 without this Rook f2 resource. It just loses a piece here. So Rook f2, Rook e, Rook e1, just winning a piece because now it's check. Um, the king would move and uh, take the bishop. So it was a sweet finish, I thought, just throwing in this check and then queen d2. Um, unexpectedly fast from, you know, being a couple of pawns up. But, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. I, I did. <laughs> Please leave any comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.